Hello, I am Bentham and welcome back to Factorio. So here we are in the dark once again. We always seem to start and end at night, but um, whatever, well, it, it, maybe it's some sort of synchronization thing with the hours and so on. But anyway, let's go over to our iron production and see how that's going because I'm not uh, I'm not quite happy with it at the moment. So I'm going to try upgrading it a bit more. Um, and I think so far iron production has never quite met the, the demands that I've had for it. So I, I should really just keep on adding stuff until it's over capacity because then I've actually got a chance of it working but um, whatever I'll, I'll just keep adding more on occasionally and, and hopefully that'll work I mean really I should get a a proper system in place with electric furnaces and things like that that's what my intention was I've just sort of not got round to it and been working on other things instead but anyway I've had to put some fast belts in now to keep the iron flowing at a decent speed there but anyway we'll make our way down to the production line see how things are going here and work on smart inserters that w which we plunked down the inser the assembly for last episode and um, I work off a, a particular system that I've used before and, and that, I'm, that I'm pretty happy with it it works well and I'll, I'll sort of talk you through a bit how you do it I'm just going to extend the belts along here so that the the going beyond what we're currently like the, the current factory area we have to keep adding more onto them occasionally but we have to craft the belts for that which takes long enough but eventually we get it done. There we go. So the way it works is that you have one belt going in between each of the inserters, each of the assemblers even. And you can this is scalable as well, so you can add more inserters in for each, uh, more assemblers in for each type of inserter. So first of all, if you can get it right, which I didn't, um, you have um, circuits going on to um, one side of the belt between the two, between fast and smart inserters, and it has to be on the side closer to fast inserters um, and then you get iron going in between standard and fast inserters and I also got that one wrong and, and that needs to be on the side of the um, the standard inserters and um, you'll you'll see things you'll understand why when, when we get a bit further on so we plunk down some uh, plunk it down in the right place this time some underground belts and everything to get it into place so there we go we've got circuits on one side in between two of them and then um, normal uh, old uh, iron plates in between the others and then we have um, circuits and um, gears going alongside the, uh, the standard inserters and then we set it up like this and basically what this means is that each uh, well the, the standard and the fast inserters are added onto the belt um, so that they can be taken off by the smart inserters and this allows you to stick in extra smart inserter assemblers or whatever needs to be put in to make things go as efficient as possible. You can see there it is running in the the, the standard and the fast inserters are building up nicely. Though of course um, we can add in another um, inserter to speed that up and try and get the uh, the smart inserter assembler going as fast as possible. So that should, um, well that's, now that that's going it goes straight over to Blue Science and Blue Science is now set off and it's started um, producing. So um, once that's built up a bit we'll start, we'll be able to do some science that requires Blue Science packs. So anyway, with that sorted, I wander back over to the, the the smelting area, check on things there, and the coal is running down, and also I, I decide to expand it even more now that we're making blue science as well by adding in another mining drill and another furnace. But of course we need the, the coal to supply them, so I, I plonk in a bit that I have available just to tide it over while I go and grab some more. Um, so there we go, there's the chest, take a bunch out of there. And it's not as much as I was hoping for, there's only six stacks there I think, and Really, I'd like to just put six stacks in in the supply for um, iron, but I need to go and refill everything else as well, the, the steel and the copper and the stone, and also the supply for the train, if I, if I bother to do that. Yeah, there we go. And so there's not that much left to actually put in the um, on the supply for iron, so I go and add in a new mining drill because it's quite clear that we need to increase the coal supply if we're going to carry on increasing the number of things that use coal. So I get the, the f a fourth mining drill set up for coal there, and then I also decide to move the coal store that we've got because at the moment it's only taking stuff off one of the mining drills so if we put it on this area it can take it off three though I think the the, uh, the flow of, of coal is so fast that it can only make use of one but whatever I've set it up there and that should be fine make my way over with, with a little more coal that I've gathered now so I can just stick that into things to keep them going and then later on I can go and check on the coal mining system when it's got actually my decent amount and I can go put that in, in the iron and so on Anyway, I do some tweaking on, on the stone wall production, getting it to produce more walls because we want to have a nice big supply so that at some point in the future we can run around and, and build 
big defensive walls all the way around the area that we're currently covering though it's a bit difficult to defend the production line because it's going to keep expanding and there's no lakes around to protect us either so we'll have to we'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it i suppose and we may need to do some expansion later on or something like that i'm still not sure i'm going to have like my big train station and things like that though so um, i have to factor that in too Anyway, um, circuit production is not quite meeting the demands that I would like it to, so I decided to try upgrading the assemblers to the level 2 assemblers. At the moment, it's limited by the supply of iron, but that is because I just took a bunch off the, the other line. So it, um, it's all being split between them. Get a bit more science done. I'm working on bullet damage now, so just um, to help me fight against the biters. I'd like to be able to get rid of that cluster of worms next to the, the, uh, the big um, ore deposit that we have that looks like an apple. That I, that I might have as a protected area in my base rather than mining it because it looks so nice. Anyway, I hopped on the oil train to go and see what, how things are going over in this outpost. And um, it's not great, really. The, there's not enough oil supply to keep the, the refinery running at all time. And also, there's no petroleum gas left. And there's huge stores of, of heavy and light fuel that are going to start to be a problem if we don't get a, um, advanced oil processing research soon enough. Also, we're having a little bit of power problem now. It's We're not quite powering everything fully because we've reached that sort of capacity now, so I'm going to have to work on that this episode as well. But anyway, we get this one pump jack set up, but unfortunately I didn't bring any iron with me. I used it all up on the assemblers for circuits, so um, I'm going to have to run back home, grab some more iron so I can actually get finish off the underground belt so that I can get the oil hooked up and, and get the refinery running at full speed again. So I'll make my way back home. We get some signs done while we're there check up on, on stone production, things like that, and then just run along the line, stealing all the iron. And uh, by doing it at this point... Oh, oh, we've had an attack. Okay, forget that. We, we, the, some biters are attacking the steam engines, is, which is pretty disastrous, so I'll run in and take them out, but the damage is done. I mean, it's not too catastrophic. All the boilers and the, the engines are intact. But we've lost some pipes, a lot of conveyor belts, and also some of the burner inserters that were supplying things, so I start rebuilding and putting everything back together. Um, get the burner inserters back in place, get them switched on. I don't actually realise, but um, uh, the pipes were destroyed in such a way that um, two of the three columns are actually shut down. I didn't realise it at first, but um, everything was broken anyway, so I get that fixed, and then all the engines switch back on and everything's back to normal. Though interestingly enough, the, the power production rate is now lower than it was before. The water temperature is lower than 100, it's at like 97, 98 and things like that. And I, what I guess is the reason is that um, before now, um, the steam engines had some time to, to get up to full steam. And then once the power requirements got higher, they were at full steam ready to supply. And now that they've switched off and they're having to um, go straight to maximum speed, they don't have time for the water to heat up or something like that. But anyway, um, we've got the iron that we need now, so I can go connect that up to the oil supply. And it turns out that just the one pump jack is enough to keep it, to keep everything supplied again because it's got it's um, providing 2.1 a second, and that's enough to to tip things back over so the refinery is working at full speed again. But we will have to do something about that soon. But anyway, I wander off into the north to have a on a bit of a scouting mission, just to have a look around, see what the area is like, and and uh, decide on what sort of things I'm going to build in what places because. Um, you know, I want to make use of, of all this area by the sea to, to put pollution in, really. Because um, pollution over the sea doesn't have any negative effect on anyone, really. So, you know, it's, um... Well, the fish might not be happy, but then at the moment the fish are barely implemented. I think you can... Uh, uh, apparently you can actually catch fish, but I, I don't know how. I, maybe you just mine them or something, but I've never bothered with it. Um, but they won't... They, they're fine with the pollution. They don't become giant deadly piranha fish or anything and try and destroy you. So there's no worry there. Grabbing some more iron off the line. Of course, every time I do this, it means that there's a, a, a big gap in the iron line, which means that um, a lot of systems, particularly gears and circuits, will just shut down for a minute while there's no iron turning up. But whatever, it's fine. So I've grabbed some more iron to, to um, make a bunch of uh, conveyor belts and things like that. And then I run over to the, the, the steam area, the power generation, and I start deconstructing some of the bits around one of the columns because... Um, I'm actually going to move them. So I plunk down a mining drill over here and start setting off with a big long conveyor belt all the way down to uh, the coast. Maybe in future I'll have a train for that, the, 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 the coal is fairly close, but I suppose eventually it will probably be mined or something. Maybe not actually thinking about it because I barely ever use coal um, later on. 
Um, but it might be that I, I use a train to deliver it one day, but for now I'll use a conveyor belt. So um, what I've just done is deconstructed one of the steam engine columns, and I'm now making my way back over to this um, to the coast uh, with some power lines, and I'm going to rebuild the entire steam engine's uh, column over in this area. And basically the reason for this is that, um, well, it, as I said, the pollution will be out over the sea rather than out over the biter bases, and they'll like me more or uh, hate me less. It's probably the more accurate statement. Um, so we get all that set up, get the conveyor belt coming round, uh, use a splitter, and then I just need to jump start the, um, the system with some bits of wood in the burner inserters and off they go, generating um, a lot of heat to go into the steam engines and then there goes the power. So once again we're working with all three steam columns. So with that set up it's time to run back and, and get another steam column though. Before I do that I add in another mining drill because uh, at the moment the power generation with me messing about with it so much is a bit low. The mining drills aren't running quite as fast as they usually would do meaning that they're not supplying as much coal as they usually would. Uh, of course, this is a recipe for disaster when they are the ones fueling the steam engines in the first place, so um, it's good to have a couple of redundant um, mining drills just to make sure the, the coal supply is, is a lot more than it needs to be because it might turn out that it does need to be more later on. So I get the, the boilers set up and, and the steam engines for the other column, jumpstart that, and then there we go. So we've got a nice double steam engine column set up to keep things powered though the supply of coal doesn't seem to be quite enough to keep things fueled at the moment but I think it's just because the boilers are filling up so I'll leave that to it and that should um, hopefully get filled up properly and everything will be running nicely again so what this now means is that all, this, all the coal being mined over here with the old se um, system is going spare pretty much apart from a small amount going into the one remaining column so I'll have a ton of coal available to dump into all of the various places it needs to be and so that's what I do now. I run around the, the copper area and the, ste and the steel sorting out, adding in more coal. And also we've actually had a mining drill run out for copper, which is the first mining drill we've had to run out for anything so far. Um, it's interesting that it was copper first, especially the one nearest, which it w was probably backed up some of the time with copper with the copper supply being good and strong. Anyway, we're back in the production area to see how things are going. And circuit production is not brilliant. It's, it's not going through as, as quickly as I would like it to be. But at the moment I've got other things to work on. I've, I've got two new things that I want to get produced. Um, and one of them is the, the the other use that I have for batteries. I can't remember if there are other things that you can make with the batteries. I, I guess there, there are maybe like laser turrets and things like that. But basically um, the usage that I want for it is um, accumulators. So I'm now setting up the assembler to make those. So we get the conveyor belt set up. We get the inserter in place. And then there we go. We've got some accumulator production emptying out into a chest once I've connected that up to the power system there it goes so we'll be able to start setting up a, a, um, some accumulator um, areas later on um, and then also of course um, to go with the accumulators we need solar panels so I, um, I just I just had to move the chest out of the way for solar pa for accumulators so that I can set up solar panels right next to it so solar panels needs three different things those being circuits steel plates and copper plates the annoying thing being that it requires a lot of circuits. I think it's 15 per um, solar panel, whereas it's five each of of copper and steel. So um, it's going to be pretty taxing for our already taxed um, circuit system. And we're going to have to try and fix that. The thing is we need to fix it by fixing iron, um, which has been broken since the beginning, basically, because I've never actually put in enough bits of enough production stuff to get it working properly. Maybe I will one day. I suppose I will have to one day. So anyway, we get all these bits um, connected up so that they're all leading up to the assembler, get the inserters going in, and I also decide to move up the accumulator production one just to keep it all nice and even. And then I can set up the two chests right next to each other for accumulators and solar panels, which will be lovely. So we can, uh, later on, once they've been made, we can start harvesting from there and making um, some solar panel outposts and some accumulator outposts and things like that. So that'll be nice. Um, I could have probably had them emptying into the same chest thinking about it, but I didn't think about that at the time, so they're in two separate ones. So we just started doing advanced oil processing, because you can see that Blue Science has built up quite a bit now. So we can use that to do advanced oil processing, which is, I think, well, to me it's the most urgent um, Blue Science um, research thing, because um, the oil system is basically doomed to fail um, if you don't use that, unless you're 
making a bunch of solid fuel if, if if you can make that with basic oil processing, which I think you can. But anyway, I've decided to upgrade um, carbon production because, of course, with um, solar panel production going, we now need increased circuit production, and for that we need more copper. So I stick down another two furnaces and then another two mining drills as well, and that's all good. Stick some uh, coal in that. But then I decide that now the, the copper production is good enough that we can have a, a dedicated coal supply like we do with iron. So I set up the chest for that, um, and then we have to actually go grab some iron because I just used it up putting um, coal into the uh, the mining drill, well, yeah, into the furnaces that we already had. So I'll run over and grab some more coal, and also we got the adva advanced oil processing researched in, um, while we were doing that. So now working on electric energy distribution too, that will give us the, um, the substation, which will um, be brilliant for making um, accumulator outposts. Anyway, I've got the, the coal into the various places it needs to be now, just resupplying everything nicely. And we're getting, we've got a lot more coal now to work with, which is good, so we can get things properly supplied. Um, I'm wondering if maybe I should have set up um, coal actually being put onto the line, rather than me having to carry it there. But whatever, um, I, soon enough I should change to um, electric um, furnaces. Anyway, I just grabbed a ton of iron off the line to, to keep me supplied. And then I run over to the the accumulator and solar panel production to get some stuff there. I grab myself some solar panels and now I'm having a look at the map and scouting out some big large open areas to stick some solar fields in. So I've chosen my location. Unfortunately I can't take the oil train there because actually the oil outpost is further away from this area than the main outpost is pretty much. So make my way over right up here. And it doesn't need to be sort of in the middle like other things do because it doesn't create any pollution. So I just can stick it right up in, in the north area of this of the starting zone. At the moment I've only got enough for two squares but that'll be nice for now and now we just need to run along with some pylons get that connected up to the rest of the grid so, and what that should hopefully mean is that during the daytime we will never have any power problems. We'll still have a bit in the night until we get accumulators sorted out but that should be fine. So there we go having a look at the power system and you can see the solar panels are now generating some power and it's not very much but it is something so um, you know we, it's it's useful. So I've run over and, and grabbed some uh, walls and some stone and things like that just to get ready to start building some walls soon enough because the biters will come and in fact they have done for the for the steam engines haven't they so we do need to put in some defenses in the north to make sure that stops happening anyway back over to accumulator and, in, and inserter production just to check on things and I grabbed some accumulators out of the system um, and uh, the, sp the specific number that I was going for was 96 um, but then I decided that um, I I was getting a bit ahead of myself so I just got 48 and that's a very specific number that y you'll understand a lot later on um, or you'll understand already if you've seen my previous series probably anyway um, the thing is science is now ground to a halt because we've run out of blue science pack so I set up another assembler to try and help that but the thing is the problem lies more in smart inserters and therefore um, uh, electric circuits which are being siphoned off to solar panels before they are being siphoned off to um, at smart inserters. So that is a bit of a problem and at the moment the, the reason for this is actually copper which is interesting so I'll, I'm going to have to run over and deal with copper now because um, apparently even with this upgrade that I've made the increased uh, strain on the circuit system is a bit too much and I now have to add in even more. Um, so I add in w another um, furnace and I don't have to put any coal in that this time because it's got the, the automatic loading system and I stick down another two mining drills. The reason it's two is because I'm um, looking at the system at the moment. What the the final furnace didn't seem to be doing anything much. It seems like it, you need something like a ratio of seven mining drills to six furnaces or something like that. I, I could be wrong, but it's what it seems like to me anyway. So we now actually have to put some faster um, belts on the copper line as well to keep things running smoothly. So I set that up, and you can see it is building up a bit. So maybe the ratio is more like ten mining drills to nine furnaces or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, that's um been a nice increase to the copper supply and hopefully that will help to keep uh, circuit production going. The thing is that there's a lot of things now that are taking uh, off the the main belt of copper and what that's meaning is less is going on to the belt that goes to circuit production. Um, so uh, we're gonna have to continue to increase copper so we need to increase copper and iron now really to get things working properly. Um, may, at some point there'll be an episode where I do a big project sorting out electric mining drills and things like that. So anyway, with some last bits of inspection on, on the on the 
system I just wait for the uh, electric energy distribution to be done and then we will say that that is the end there so there we go do some more research on random stuff and I shall say goodbye thank you for watching and I shall see you next time